So the masters, they say, that you should not get involved so much into material world that your spirituality suffers. At the same time, you should not become so involved with spirituality that your material life suffers. The best approach I have found so far, which I have noticed in my day-to-day -day life, and especially during my business career, was to integrate spirituality in the material world. Good morning and hearty namaskars to all of you. One question that I have received from Sri Parth from Alwar, Rajasthan. Daji, how can I become like you? Oh, this is quite flattering. A good business person and a good human being, successful in everything. Well, it depends on what you mean by success. Philosophy of heartfulness, the Sahaj Mark Paddhati is very simple. That you need not alienate your life from both material or spiritual. You must try to integrate them both. This is the clarion call of my Guruji, Pujya Babaji Maharaj. That moment you ignore one for the other, ipso facto you will suffer. For example, you may become very successful in your business. Lovely family, everything are going well. Children are also obedient. Wife is loving and you have loyal friends. What more can you ask? But if your inner heart still craves for something more, something beyond this ephemeral, and when you are at the deathbed and you are thinking, what did I achieve in my life for my spiritual success, spiritual advancement, then you will wonder, yes. Life has been great, family members have been great, friends have been great. But somewhere along, I did not attain something I should have attained during my lifetime. Spiritual success. Then, all this acquisition in the material world, emotional world, will collapse in thin air in front of you. They will become meaningless. Do you really want that to happen? No. So the masters, they say, that you should not get involved so much into material world that your spirituality suffers. At the same time, you should not become so involved with spirituality that your material life suffers. The best approach I have found so far, which I have noticed in my day-to-day -day life, and especially during my business career, was to integrate spirituality in the material world. And it doesn't take a lot to integrate spirituality in the business world. To run your business ethically with a consciousness that all that I am doing is to serve my Lord, my God. Very practical question from Partha Sarma, Satna, Madhya Pradesh. How to develop my willpower? to wake up early morning to do my meditation. I think willpower, to me, it's a matter of interest. Do you like ice cream? I suppose you do. Do you use willpower to have it? Perhaps you need willpower how not to have an ice cream. But to have an ice cream, do you need willpower? You don't, because you are interested in it. You love it, you like it, that's your passion. So develop passion, develop interest. See what meditation can do. Do it few times when you are awake. Don't have to force yourself for meditation. But meditate when you can meditate when you are up and see what meditation can do to you. And automatically, as interest will develop, as passion will develop, your experience will take you into that zone that, oh, I need to get up early. And each time, you'll be able to compare your experiences. That when you meditate at 5 in the morning before sunrise, or 6 in the morning, or 
10 in the morning. You see the difference. You meditate sometime at 6 o'clock, sometime at 5, sometime at 10, sometime at 2 in the, at noon. And like a scientist, find it for yourself which meditation is more effective. And when you do find a great amount of intensity in your meditation at that particular time slot, adopt that time slot for your meditation. Another question from Yogesh Narayan Chennai. What is the secret of living a peaceful life? When will this pandemic situation get over completely? Well, leading a peaceful life, it depends what you mean by peaceful life. Each individual has a different definition. You see, peaceful life to one means avoiding what is not good and embracing what is really, really enchanting. That gives them peace. To me, at this level in my life, peaceful life means no controversies so far, <laughs> no disputes, not only in me, but in others also. So it's not enough that I lead a peaceful life. But when I do see some disturbance elsewhere too, it does affect me too. Directly or indirectly, we are all leading a life together. Lead a balanced life in such a way that we are not pushed into this or that. It's easy to talk, but to arrive at such a state, it's not very difficult. Meditate well, do your cleaning properly every evening and offer your prayer before you finally retire. These three simple practices brings about so much of joy and balance in life that you will be amazed at how such simple practices can revolutionize your life. And as far as COVID goes, I don't know when it's going to get over, but research as well as the trajectory shows that it's not going to happen in the near future. You have seen the first wave. You have seen the impact of the second wave. Logically also, if you think that one person getting this COVID in China and how it got spread all across China, starting with limited that wet market in Wuhan, and then from that wet market into the entire city of Wuhan and the surrounding area, and then the whole China, and throughout the world. Now it's everywhere. It's mutating also very fast. We have seen Delta. There is Delta Plus. And who knows how many more Deltas will come. There is no end to this mutation. And each time organism mutate, it only becomes stronger and stronger, very rarely weaker. Unless there is some intervention, a real scientific breakthrough, which we are all waiting for. Vaccination can help us prevent. Mm -hmm.